broadcasting live across Australia and across the world. This is Live FM. I'm Ralph Barber. We're broadcasting live from STEM Mad 2019. And I've got the wonderful crew from Panola Catholic College in Broadmeadows here with me. We've got uh, Benjamin. How are you there, Benjamin? Hello. And we've got Jordan and we've got Nicholas. Hello. How are you going? And we've got the wonderful teacher. Uh, Pascal Roulant. Hello. How are you, mate? How are you going? Well, thanks. We had a good long chat yesterday. That's right. Uh, I feel I know you so well, Pascal, already. (laughs) Fantastic. So, guys, tell us, firstly, what year level are you in, uh, Nicholas? Um, Currently in year nine. Currently year nine? Yep, year nine. And year Year nine, nine. okay. Uh, I said in the previous interview, and I think I've told you this myself, uh, Pascal, the year nine level is a black hole level. I call it a black hole because uh, you haven't got the excitement of year seven coming into a new school and you don't have the focus of year 11 and 12. So you need to be excited about something, don't you? And tell us about your innovation today. I started off, I started off uh, ben, uh, Benjamin. Uh, Pascal tried to explain this yeah. to me yesterday, but uh, I think you'd probably be able to explain it to me better. Because you guys uh, are <laughs> well, and truly, yeah, <laughs> well and truly uh, got your whole you know, commitment to it. So, Benjamin, tell us about what you guys are presenting today. Um, so, we're presenting a microbial fuel cell. Um, okay. Yeah, George? Um, so, the microbial fuel cell, essentially, it's using bacteria called, their specific bacteria called anaerobic bacteria, which basically means that they don't live in environments with oxygen. And they can produce, elect- we're using them to produce electricity by um, a process called um, oxidation and reduction. So they basically, um, you put them in a chamber with waste products and they break up the waste products and the nutrients into hydrogen atoms yep. that are positively charged and electrons. Yeah. So Nicholas, how can this help the world? Um, this can help the world as um, it creates a small amount of electricity. One microbial fuel cell, one of the ones that we made produces about 0.2 volts. So if you can get enough of them and you connect them in both series as well as in parallel, you can increase both the voltage and the amps. That's right, yeah. And you can use this to power many different things. So could this effectively in the future, Benjamin, if you want to throw in here, uh, can this effectively power our cities, power our villages or towns or homes or what what level can it power um, can it power my radio station for example uh probably not <laughs> <laughs> so where, where can we go with this pascal could well the uh we, we've got a lot of uh treatment plants so let's say in victoria for instance and uh, a lot of the uh, these are great treatment plants and they already have a process of treating our uh the water used by uh, uh, melbourne and um uh, the microbial fuel cell could actually offset some of the costs of the treatment. Okay. And we already, there's an existing infrastructure already within each of these treatment plants with anaerobic uh, uh, lagoons, uh, like the one in, uh, in the Werribee, the Western uh, treatment plant. Uh, and so this, uh, the microbial fuel cell could be adapted to a, a system like that uh, to tackle uh, wastewater. Uh, it could also be uh, a lot of industries that use water to clean the, ma- the machinery and uh, um, such as dairy uh, yep. produce, it could be uh, any um, in farms. So even though the water currently can be used for irrigation, etc., uh, the microbial fuel cell can generate enough power to to uh, be used for the, the the current machinery or equipment that uh, treats the plant. So it offsets those costs, yep. and uh, would be a, a lot of a benefit to the. Um, to those companies yeah. as well. Yeah. So, so, Benjamin, tell me how. I mean, I, I know when I was going to school and I did anything in school, it was all in theory. Read it out of a book, learn it off by heart, do an exam, and you really didn't do anything real. The teachers tried to say, oh, this yeah. is really important to you, but I didn't see any sense in it. Doing this sort of work that actually can directly uh, affect, in a beneficial way, the community, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel... Um I don't really know how to um, explain it, but... Do you feel like yeah. you're actually adding value and, and doing something for your community by coming up with something like this? Yeah. Okay, and Jordan, how about yourself? Yeah, I think it's pretty exciting. It's like can spark an interest for future careers. Yeah. And yeah, it's... Okay. Yeah, and Nicholas? Um, it's really great to um, have this thing, to have this um, opportunity to be able to um, create something that could, in the future, power basically anything yeah and it's a, you know, as Jordan said does it actually get you interested in a, maybe a, a career path down this way science technology 
engineering or maths? Um, yeah, it kind of does actually. Yeah, anyone, any sort of career in particular? Um, something to do with engineering. Okay, how about yourself, Jordan? You sound like you're, you're pretty passionate about it. Yeah, I think um, it sort of gets me interested in the biology sort of area towards it. I know because I've been pretty interested in biology as well and how the, the cells can work with all that stuff. Stuff, yeah. Fantastic. And Ben, ben what, uh, what do you, what, I mean, does it get you at all thinking about a future in uh, in science and technology? Not really. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but it's okay because I, I was not strong at science and technology at all in yeah. school and I had no interest until I started going into schools broadcasting stuff around STEM. And yeah. suddenly I think, oh, my God, what, what can happen? That's got to excite you as a teacher too, Pascal. Uh, look, I, I love all the, uh, the emerging technologies that are coming around. There's a lot of potential um, in STEM. Um, often it's, it's in the science areas that the, the STEM uh, um, lessons uh, yeah. come out. But it, it's very applicable to lots of subject areas. It, it's just a, a matter of uh, talking about it and meeting with uh, other schools and discussing with teachers what they're doing as well yep. and, and really making it um, a real experience for, for everyone. Well, congratulations on the work you're doing, Pascal. We Thank had you. a good chat yesterday. I got a real sense of uh, how much de- how dedicated you are to this sort of uh, teaching and learning in your school, yeah, so keep the, it going. And these guys have been really great. They're coming in their lunchtime and, and uh, dedicating yeah. their time to, to putting this together as well. Yeah, I'll only be impressed if you start getting up at five in the morning and getting to school <laughs> by six. Don't worry about lunchtime. It's where you get up in the morning and say, oh, I've got to get to school really quickly. But look, congratulations on what you guys are presenting today. This is being beamed throughout the Catholic Leadership Centre. So uh, give us a bit of a pitch, Jordan, about why people should come and see your exhibition. Oh, I think... Um Talk to the people out there. Yeah, I think it would be pretty important to come and see not only our exhibition but all the exhibitions around because it gives you some pretty cool ideas about what's achievable, even from the levels that we're using, just a bit to make the world a better place. Yeah, Fantastic, Jordan. Well, everyone get to see the uh, Panola Catholic College uh, Broadmeadows uh, exhibition in the uh, Celtic Hall. Here at Catholic Leadership Centre, it's a wonderful. Uh, We're on table sixty-six. Table micro- sixty-six, yeah. Pascal says. So, Microbe your fuel cell. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on what you guys are doing, and I can't wait to come and see you guys in action later on. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much, Ralph. That's uh, Benjamin. Thanks. We've got uh, Jordan, Nicholas, Year Nine students, also Pascal Roulant, the uh, head of science there at no, not uh, not here, just the uh, sorry, science teacher. So teacher, yeah. So teacher, but I think you're ahead of I'm going to promote you here today, uh, here on Live FM. I'll tell my boss. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys, for joining us today. Thanks uh, very much, Ralph. We're broadcasting live from uh, STEM Mad 2019. It is at the Catholic Leadership Centre. I'm Ralph Barber on Live FM.